and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create I'm going to create another effect and this will be where we will code our actual rules um, and I'm going to call it EF my mod uh, rules and this this is going to have a script on it that we're going to call effect system just and you can call it whatever you want as long as you match the name properly and this is a, this is not going to have a type it's not going to have a subtype it's a, all these are going to be set to zero and um, for the flags um, since uh, the rule system I'm creating is going to be a damage overrider it's going to it's going to create new rules for damage um, best thing to do is make sure that uh, it, it doesn't it doesn't need to and shouldn't um, synchronize with clients or the uh, or beyond the uh, owner of the effects so so how how I'm going to get both of these effects here there's a calculator you can use um, if you are unfamiliar with uh, hex values and how to add hex values together properly because adding 40 plus 80 is not going to equal 120 so I'll just show you what it will equal if you add 40 and you add 80 you're gonna get C0 so to add both of these here add both of these uh, flags we need to put C0 so what the what what this does is uh, <coughs> um, since we're, we're overriding damage it doesn't need it, the clients don't need to send data to the server we're, we're uh, trying to take away as much need for the client to process or send and receive bits as possible um, so it, this, uh, this uh, should also reduce the amount of errors and uh, duplicate messages um, from having a uh, having an effect system synchronized with clients <clears throat> so getting back into Eclipse here what I'm going to do is from from this uh, from this effect system starter I'm going to actually uh, initialize uh, an act an actor object that is the owner of this effect and this is how you would do it to figure out who's who <clears throat> and from that I'm going to initialize actor effect by level. I'm going to initialize it by level. Alright, here we go. And I'm going to initialize that effect we just created. You have my mod rule. And setting duration to zero um, keeps it active. And we're going to say the we don't actually need um, anything beyond that. No flags or any of that. So that's pretty much that's pretty much the basics. That's all we need to initialize our rules. And it, was that rules? Yes. Yeah. Make sure it matches EF my mod rules. And from there, we're going to create another script and. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm giving you an example of what you can do with setting the rules of uh, your mod. You can you can do pretty much anything from from overriding uh, damage for any type of character type. <clears throat> Here, I'll just show you. I'm going to create a copy of this script. Yeah. And we're going to call that 
if system. Now from here we don't need this script here. <coughs> We do want to keep that save and restore because we'll use that eventually. Actually, we don't need those. <clears throat> All we need is the effect start. As I say, it's So this is the effect system starter script that we apply to two commonly uh, used effects. Actually, that was on the wrong one. Actually, that was on the wrong one. That, that was on mana. Though most humans will actually receive increased mana over time effect. But there's a but uh, applying that to increase blood OT over time is is a better idea because uh, I may want to change the rules for increased mana, maybe even remove the effect outright to start up some new rules. So this is where this is where our rules will be made, and. Uh, this is the script we're going to be working on for those rules. There's a number of things we can add to the effect system. This this can uh, potentially turn into a fairly large file, depending on what type of backbone you want to develop. There's whole kinds of things you can do um, within this this schema. <clears throat> you can get the uh, Vampire Procedures um, document. Um, Somewhere in here. I think I put it in here somewhere. Vampire procedures list. And this is an attachment <coughs> that if you open it up, you get the uh, you get the full list of events that the uh, that the uh, nod engine sends to the Java API background and this is the environment we'll be coding in and this is the, essentially uh, these are the choices we get um, I wouldn't recommend all of these events to be put in your effects system um, some of these uh, events could actually cause crashes if you attempt to apply them to your system rule. Um, there are specific uh, specific events that I would uh, I would use from this uh, vampire procedures um, file and explicitly um, damage rules are very common. <coughs> At least uh, when I'm coding my mods my uh, like uh, the endeavor modification Woldo and all that when I'm creating a, when I'm creating a, a rule system for my mod commonly I'm adjusting how damage works <clears throat> and to get the, to get this particular damage thing, this won't be enough to actually run properly what we actually have to do to get this to run right um, we need to uh, Let's see here, capture thing, actor, good, and it's, it's going to take, yeah, that is, uh, that is a legitimate command, so, <clears throat> this, uh, this command here, capture thing, will take an ID, an integer, it takes an integer, and, uh, that ID is of the owner, this first one, the actor good, and that's the, of the one who has the icon applied to them, the effect applied to them. And this will capture 
that thing and allow what what the capture thing command allows is to track additional events on that particular object. So in this case, we're tracking we're tracking damage now. So now that this script has captured the uh, the actor, the the owner of the effect, it can now track damaged. 